Well, welcome back to the Dobson's Dough channel. Please remember to, to like and subscribe. Today, uh, I've been requested to show uh, just an easy way of making naan breads. Uh, the ingredients is 400 grams of flour, seven grams of sugar, seven grams of yeast, seven grams of olive oil, uh, 100 cc's of water, 100 cc's of milk. Um, I'm using semi-skimmed milk. I've not found different milks make any difference at all. Uh, 40 grams of yogurt. Uh, some people also add a bit of coconut milk. Um, I guess that's down to taste really. Um, what I'm going to just show you through is we've got olive oil as well. We'll start off with seven grams. We are going to use a bit more olive oil as we go through. In addition, and in addition, we'll probably use a bit more, a bit more plain flour as well. Uh, the steps is quite simple, and I'll talk you through it. But the steps basically is to get the dry yeast nice and active. So it's lukewarm water, 100 cc's, 100 grams, with the yeast, with the sugar, mix up. Leave for 10 minutes and that's just going to become nice and bubbly. Then we're going to add the milk, the yogurt, the salt, uh, the flour and mix that up. And then we just leave that to rest. We add a bit of touch of olive oil as well, then we leave that to rest. It's not a brilliant day today. It's, it's raining and wet and fairly cold, even though it's, I don't know what you're recording, it's in May. Um, so probably going to have to leave it for about three hours just to mature and grow a bit. Then we're going to mix it around a bit, shape it, uh, flatten it out using a rolling pin, rub some olive oil onto the rolling pin, uh, and then cook it. So the whole process probably takes about, including cooking, about three and a half to, to four hours. Um, the long time is basically in this cold weather just to leave it to prune for a bit. Okay, so the first bit is fairly straightforward. And this is nice hand warm, look uh, warm water, 100 cc's, seven grams of yeast. That's about two teaspoons of yeast, seven grams of sugar. Just checking this is sugar and not salt because I don't want to the yeast off. Uh, seven grams of sugar. Um, that was, again, about a teaspoon's worth of sugar. I'm just gonna leave this now, just to make the sugar nice and bubbly and active. So, I'm gonna leave this and it's gonna start bubbling away, get it really nice and active, at least because it is cold. It's going to be about 10 minutes, so, I need to cover this. Okay, so, just cover this now and, Leave that for 10 minutes and then we'll start adding the rest of the ingredients. Well, welcome back. I'd love to say it's 10 minutes later, but it's so cold here. It's actually 20 minutes later. Uh, and this is nice and frothy now. So we've got like a, a nice kind of froth on the top of the, uh, the yeast. So we know that's nice and active and bubbling away, which is good. Now it's just a case of adding all the ingredients. So um we'll add the salt actually we'll add the milk first so that's 100 cc's or milliliters of milk we'll add the salt we'll add the yogurt 40 grams of yogurt i'm just using natural yogurt remember as well you can add um coconut milk as well. Some people had about just a small amount, like a teaspoon for about seven grams of it. There's 450 grams of flour. Now I haven't added the olive oil yet, but adding that to touch. Mixing that together. So basically just giving this a really good mix now. Get 
getting quite solid. Just add some olive oil now. This is just seven grams of olive oil. Now I've kept the olive oil handy because we're going to use that a bit later. I've kept the flour handy because we're going to use that a bit later as well. This is where we get our fingers a bit on the sticky side. What we're going to do now is just push down and mix up the flour with everything else. So this is just mixing up. So if I just bring this close to the camera, all I'm doing now is just pushing down with my uh, hands and then mixing up because we've got some dry stuff at the bottom. So all I'm trying to do there is basically mix that, all the dry stuff, all the dry stuff in because we've got some dry stuff here. It's being mixed in. So all I'm doing now is pushing down. I'm going to probably mix this for about 10 minutes, probably a bit less. And then it's simply going to rest for about three hours. This is cold, so three, maybe a touch more. Obviously, if it's warm, we leave it for less. But you can see how this is shaping into a dough. Ah, I've left the tablecloth on, which is a bit of a shame because it makes it really difficult to knead. If I take this out of the bowl, you can see it better. Okay. Now, he's mixing it by hand for a bit. Just Just pick all the bits up. Need it. So I'm probably just going to need it now for probably just another five minutes. Then I'll just roll it into a ball like that. Rub it in here. <laughs> I will probably try and find somewhere a bit warmer, and then just leave this to rise for about one to rises about one and a half times the size. Um, and then after that, we simply just. Chop it into quarters, roll it out in a rolling pin. Um, you can just hand roll it out if you want. Um, obviously with the rolling pin, it's, it's nice and dry, so it's not sticking to anything. I'm gonna to have to remove this, I think. I'm gonna struggle using a rolling pin on this, I think. So I'll have to remove that and tidy up. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, I that she doesn't see it. Um, so you can see this is, this is shaping up be a really nice, really nice dough. So, so. Recommending it on the hard surface, not on the tablecloth. It's far more difficult on the tablecloth. So the tablecloth slides underneath you. There we go. So stick to the bowl otherwise I would just put some olive oil in the bowl just to prevent it from sticking. But certainly when I'm starting to roll it out and everything I will definitely um, be using the olive oil there. Okay. Turn the 
and home. And now I'm gonna leave it to rest. Remember if it's warmer, it will rise faster. Um, certainly if this was a summer day, it's like, you know, nice and warm. This would have risen in about one and a half hours. It's not sunny, it's fairly cold here. So this is gonna take about, sitting between two and three hours. What I'm doing really is washing it to rice about one half times the amount. Okay, so let's get on in a bit. Well, welcome back. Uh, now the bit that I found most difficult is, uh, we're gonna use the rolling pin. To be honest, I find I much rather shake things out properly with my hands than using a rolling pin. So, uh, start with just a light covering of oil. Simply makes this easier for us to work with. And then we're gonna lift it from the bowl. And there we go. Lift it from the bowl. As you can see there, it's about slightly over one half times the size. What I'm going to do really is just give it a light covering to make life a bit easier working with it. Okay, cut it into quarters. Simply now it's the straightforward quarter. Make it into a ball. A ball, quite a bit of oil on it so I don't need oil on the rolling pin. Just do the same with the second one as well. Okay, press it out. Personally, I'd rather wish this out of you will do a pizza. But I believe the proper way is just to uh, roll it with a rolling pin. So let's give this a try. Just flatten it out. then ready for the frying pan. I should make it a bit thinner than that. And also throw it out flat a bit better than that as well. So second one done. Frying pan, which 
I'll show, I'll show next. Okay, welcome back. As you can see now we've moved into the kitchen. Um, I've taken all of the four, the, uh, the, two, the doll, the pat and everything and rolled them out. Uh, as I've warned in the video, I was <laughs> I'm really rubbish at rolling. I just can't roll things in into a round shape. I'd rather just knead them out with my hands as you've seen with uh, when I've been working with other things. Okay, so we now have the we now have the non breads, you can see nice and flat, uh, <laughs> though somewhat misshaped. Uh, this is this is on uh, medium heat, what I'm doing here is putting this on medium heat. I'm just leaving this to cook for a bit uh, and it's just basically start to go slightly golden brown on the side, flip it over. I just keep flipping it over while it's golden brown. Uh, and then I'm just going to do that with the rest of these. Now the key thing with naan breads is obviously if you like garlic and cheese naan, the easiest way of doing it is just simply to grate garlic and cheese on top. Um, maybe you just like to fry the garlic and put it on top and fry the garlic in olive oil. Um, or if you prefer the things then obviously put it on top. There's obviously more complicated versions where you can stuff the naan breads, uh, but that'll be for a later video. Okay, so this is just cooking for a bit. All I'm gonna do now Obviously this is a metal pan so use, carefully use a plastic spatula and just lift it up. This is warming but it's not, it's not, um, it's not brown, slightly golden brown underneath. So I'm just going to hang on for a bit, oops it's easy, I'm in a bit of a mess with this, hang on for a bit. Okay, and just, uh, it's nice and loose, I'm just going to let this fry for a bit to more golden brown and then spin it over. Um, some people like their naan breads nice and bubbly and fluffy. Some people like theirs after cooked flat. The technique there is if you like it fluffy, do not press it down. If you like your naan bread nice and flat, then just keep pressing it down as it's cooking and as the bubbles start to appear. Um, and so uh, that's it right now. I'm just gonna do the rest of these and then obviously put some photos at the end. <laughs> 